Hi, I'm Lori Gelman from Houdini.com. If you're going to be hosting a summer birthday party for a little girl, or planning any summer party, how about making this really great flip-flop cake? Now, I know what you're thinking. Who, me? But I'm here to tell you, yes, you. Or actually, Lee Hansen for Betty Crocker Kitchens is here to tell you, yes, you can do this. Hi, Leave. How are you? Hi, Lori. I love the idea of a flip-flop cake. Oh, great. So I'll show you how to make it. I would love to. Okay. This is a regular sheet cake that I baked in a 13 by 9 inch pan. And I've also pre-mixed some colors. And the cake, you can use any cake you want, whatever the birthday girl's favorite is. Okay? So we're going to take the cake and basically we're going to slice off the top of it just to make it flat. I'm using a serrated knife. Okay. Just a little bit. Not too deep, right? No, just, just, just the top dome that forms when you bake it. Would you like a bite? Can I eat that? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. So then I'm going to flip it over so that the flat side is here. And now I'm going to cut it right down the middle. So one of those cakes will do two flip-flops. Yes, really? two flip-flops. Okay. A little pair. And instead of just going ahead and cutting the shape of a flip-flop out, you know, you might mess up and then you're going to have to bake another cake, I recommend making a template. Okay. Okay, so you just place them down, and I'm going to use a small knife to cut it out, have a little bit more control. Okay. I'm basically just going to carve around it. So we're going to do a crumb coat right on this inverted sheet pan. Okay, what's a crumb coat? A crumb coat is just a thin layer of frosting that seals in all the crumbs. I'm just going to spread it on as thin as possible. So that'll be the, your all-over color. These are pink flip-flops. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got it. And just around the sides, too. Mm -hmm. And that creates a little lip of frosting. And then all you have to do to get rid of it is just come in, sort of like a little airplane landing, and then taking off again and scrape off that little lip of icing. Oh, okay. okay, so I have one done. It's kind of an interesting looking knife you're using there. What is that? This is actually an offset spatula. There's like a little bend in it. And it allows you to get into tight areas like this right here and frost it a little bit better. But if you only make one cake a year, Chances are you can use a, just a regular butter knife? You can use a butter knife. Mm -hmm. So I actually do have one that I've already crumb coated, okay. and I've chilled it for about 30 minutes, and it's ready to be iced. So we can start the decorating process Let's if you go. want. Because that looks like the most fun part. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, those look good. Okay. So we're ready for the final coat. Now what I do for these is I actually start on the sides first. And I've made an accent color of purple just to set it off a little bit from the top color. And these frosting colors are gorgeous. Aren't they fun? I'm frosting the sole of the flip-flop in the purple. That'll give it a nice accent color. And the top will do in pink. So I have it all covered. I'm just going to go around one more time just to smooth one. it out a little bit. I'm just going to take off as much of the purple frosting as I can, just by sliding my offset spatula towards the center. You're not worrying about wrecking the pink? You don't have to worry about being too neat on the top, because we're going to frost some pink frosting right on top. So I'm going to take a dollop, place it on. Now here also, you want to go up to the edge, but if it's not as perfect as you want it to be, don't worry, because we're going to do a little border to oh. hide where the two colors meet. How thick is this layer? This is a thin layer. It's a little less than a quarter inch. Um, just enough to cover the um, purple so that it doesn't come through in this coat. Okay, so now I think we're ready to start the decorating. So I have these large, you can use like a, a pancake spatula. I'm just going to put it right underneath. Put my hand under it. <laughs> and then just gently place it down. So is there a trick to doing it? Well, you just want to make sure that you get the spatula right underneath the cake and push it in as far as it'll go, and you start to lift it a little bit, and then place your hand underneath towards the back. Right. And then place it down, and again, just slide it out the same way that you pulled it in. And now we're going to start the decorating. So what we have here is some yellow frosting, and I've actually placed some in a pastry cone. I'm just going to start piping. So basically, I'm just squeezing with consistent pressure, but moving the bag up and down to create that little zigzag pattern. You always do such a crisp end. Is there a trick to doing that? Yeah, it's called tailing off. And what you do is, as you're squeezing, you release the pressure. Ah. And then you pull away. If you keep squeezing as you pull up, you'll get a little tail. Okay. So now we're going to add some little candies, just as decoration. We have some fun candies here. Okay. Sort of match our color theme. 
And basically, you can just um, stick them sort of one up, one down. Whatever way you one want. One up, yep, and just. You can get these at any store, can't you? These candies? Yeah, grocery stores, the bulk candy shops, your corner candy store. You can find them all over. Okay, now, basically, we have fruit roll ups. Okay. Cool. And I've cut them, I've sort of trimmed them into a little triangular shape at both ends. And I folded down about a quarter inch, and that'll just give it a little stability. And then I put one end in here, and then I wrap it around like that. I can do it on both sides. Are patterned fruit roll ups hard to find? No, you can find those at the grocery store. They're pretty easy to find. I'll we'll do that for so both cool. sides. You can find solid colored ones too, it doesn't really matter, just as long as it sort of matches the cake you're doing. Well for the final touch, we can just take some silk flowers and we can press them right between the straps. Pretty. The only inedible thing on this cake. Yes, and there you go. Fun. Look good enough to wear. Yes. And eat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leave. I can't wait to go to a beach party so I can actually make this and bring it and impress my friends. And if you're going to do a beach party theme, it's fun to have sand buckets on the table and fill them with goodies. You can also use sunglasses, beach balls, and seashells to decorate. And of course, this flip-flop cake can be frosted in any color you like. You should really have fun with it. I'm Laurie Gelman for Howdini.com.